Good morning and welcome to our Key Stage 3 prize giving and we're just going to begin with the National Anthem. So our first batch of prizes this morning is the Year 7 Subject Prizes. These have been awarded by students' teachers and they are for either effort, attainment or improvement. With the exception of the Merit Awards, all of the recipients will be receiving a trophy for their efforts. So our first subject prize is for art and for attainment it goes to Zibben Huang. Design and Technology, the award goes to Brendan King and that's for progress. The English Language Award goes to Jasmine Smith for attainment. Food and Nutrition, Alana Watson, also for attainment. French, Mehak Azim for attainment. Geography, Lara Hoskins for effort. History, Lushimo Simitiaba for attainment. Information Technology, Fernando Rodriguez for effort. P.E. Maya Shahadi for effort and attainment. Science. Aryan Desai for attainment. Mathematics and music both go to Quinn Stuckey for attainment for mathematics and effort in music. And the Grit Award goes to Dabuizo Ndolovu. Merit Award, Lushimo Simitiaba. And now we're going to have a piece of music performed by our year seven students and the piece is entitled Ode to Joy. we have our year eight subject prizes. And as for the year sevens, these are awarded for effort, improvement and attainment. Winners will receive a trophy and merit award winners will receive a certificate. Thank you very much, Mrs. Hoskins. And on to our year eight subject prizes. And first up, we've got our art award for this academic year. And the winner goes to a young lady for her outstanding attainment during the course of the year. Congratulations, Alana. Next on, still within the same sort of subject area, we've got design and technology, and this one goes to a young man, again for his outstanding attainment during the course of this year. Congratulations, Noel, for the award for design and technology for this academic year. On to English language next, and again, an outstanding attainment award winner here, and this award in this academic year goes to Faye Wiley. Well done, Faye. Moving on to ICT. Again, for outstanding attainment, clearly the first four students have been working incredibly hard and achieving very, very high results during the course of the year. But it gives me great pleasure to announce the ICT award winner for this academic year is Manette Cameron. 
Moving on to music and a slight change here. It's not for outstanding attainment, for outstanding effort. The music teacher, Mr. Wember, feels that this young lady has worked and really tried incredibly hard this academic year. And so the award for music for this academic year goes to Tabani Moyo. Moving on to PE. And again, we're back to outstanding attainment for a young lady who has achieved very highly throughout the entire academic year. And it gives me great pleasure to announce the winner as being Dimitra Markatu. And now we go on to the first of our double winners in year eight. This young man has won both the Food and Nutrition and the French Award this year. For the French Award, it was down to outstanding attainment. And for the Food and Nutrition, it came down to outstanding effort and attainment. And the winner of these two awards this academic year is Sebastian Coupe. And on to another double winner, this time for Geography and Science. For Geography, for outstanding progress, and for Science, for outstanding effort and attainment. So the full complement of skills there across these two awards. And the winner of these two this academic year goes to Pratap Singh. Well done, Pratap. And another double award in year eight for history and for mathematics, and it's for outstanding attainment in both of those. This young lady has obviously been working to a very high level in both subjects this year. And the winner of that award, this award, or these two awards this year, is Satuli Wirasinghe. And we've got final two awards for year eight today. We've got the one for grit, for the student that the teachers felt had shown the most determination and perseverance and resilience during this course of, of this academic year. I really like this award because it kind of epitomizes what we look for in all of our students. And the winner of the Grit Award this year is Dimitra Markatu. Well done, Dimitra. And our final award for year eight, this one is for merits, for the person who has attained the most merits during the course of this year. He's already achieved one of the prizes that we've spoken about already, but the Year 8 Merit Award this academic year goes to Noel Chibesa. Well done, Noel, and that brings us to the end of the Year 8 Awards. And our last batch of subject prizes this morning are for Year 9, and as with the other year groups, they are awarded in recognition of outstanding effort, improvement or attainment. So for art, for attainment, it goes to Chloe Davies. For design and technology, for effort and attainment, the award goes to Peter Pobble. Food and nutrition, for effort and attainment, Carissa Mobila. For geography, effort and progress, Yeye Yafufi. Music, for attainment, Temwani Nonde. For PE, effort and progress, Daphne Sikamiotis. Science, for attainment, Radia Limbada. French and mathematics for attainment in both cases goes to Franklin Valdivia Chiquin. English, history and ICT all go to the same person and all for attainment and that's Faith Smith. The Grit Award goes to Radia Limbada and merits to Faith Smith. And now we have our second musical performance of the morning. Peppermint Rag by David Cottam, performed by Noel Chibessa. During the course of this year, we have had a number of students who have completed 10 years at Baobab College, and we're now going to recognise them. Thank you very much, Mrs. Hoskins. And we've got a long list of students in years seven, eight and nine, who during the course of this academic year have completed 10 years as Baobab students. So we'll start off with our year seven students. So first of all, we have Ariane Desai, Brendan King, Kelvin Mishimwa. Also in year seven, Marcus Finley, Maya Chahari, Trisha Bashak and Seth Marston. So between them, the 70 years as Baobab students um, completed during the course of this year. Congratulations and well done, guys. Into year eight, we have Amina Lulat, Dimitra Markatu, Evangelos Markatos, Faye Wiley, James Hall, Jason Street, and Michael Steele. Again, 
a massive combination of 70 years of continuous service at Baobab between, between those seven students. And into year nine, we have Kalenga Satula, Maddie De Keek, Medea Syed, and Rudia Limbada. So a big total there of 18 students who have completed 10 years as Baobab students during the course of the academic year. Congratulations, guys, and we look forward to the remaining of your school career being with Baobab as well. And now we're going to hand over to our head girl for 2021. Tabea Cridolfa. Ten years have been spent at this beautiful school. Ten years of memories have been made. While some have felt longer and some shorter, some have been harder and some easier, and some I remember better than others, it has been time well spent. To commemorate this time, I thought I would share one memory for each year starting with 10, the nice round number of years that I've spent at Baobab. Next is nine, which represents my last year of oblivion. Sometimes I wish I could go back to year nine when I used to walk around the science block seeing the be quiet signs or hear Mr. Turner wishing the older years good luck with their exams. But I never actually knew what that meant until I went into it myself. It's crazy to think that something so all-consuming for one student is merely a bit of background noise for another. Eight is for the number of years I spent dreading swimming lessons. My word, I remember it as if it were yesterday. Lining up the knot in your stomach building and the hairs on your arm already standing up merely at the thought of getting in that cold swimming pool at eight in the morning. Oh, I really really hated that. But then I got to senior college and PE became a lot more relaxed, thankfully. Seven is for the year where my life at Baobab changed the most. All of you in secondary know how it is. It's that terrifying feeling of going from being the big cool fish in your six to being the small one that always puts up its hand in assembly. You also become the fish that everyone looks at and says, oh, they're so cute. In the end though, Year seven, just like the other years, eventually passes, and you too become a year eight and marvel at the cuteness of the year sevens. Six is for the number of letters in Falcon, letters which I used to shout with passion as house captain in year six. Give me an F, give me an A, and so on. But the word Falcon means so much more than that now. It means togetherness, house spirit, and even family. Five is for the number of people, give or take, that I had in my close friend group. In the Baobab community, people are constantly coming and going, and that's just something that you learn to live with. But I have been so blessed with some amazing and wonderful friendships that have helped shape me into who I am today. I was in year four when I first joined Baobab. Primary school holds a lot of special memories. Memories of my many wonderful teachers, memories of begrudgingly putting on my hat for break time, and the list goes on. It was a world full of boy cooties and friend drama, but I loved it so much. Three is for the number of times that I should have sat my exams, but in the end I only sat them twice. Not gonna lie, I wasn't too unhappy by the end when our exams were cancelled last year, but I am relieved to have sat them in this past year, although that is something that is better said in hindsight. Two is for the number of times that I packed up my belongings and left to Switzerland much earlier than planned due to COVID. <sighs> Here's hoping that I won't have to do that again. And down to one. That's for the one year that I've spent up in Zambia without my family. I got to spend year 13 living with the Hoskins, which has been such a blessing and so much fun. Just like my time at Baobab, it is something that I will never forget. And as for zero, well, that's where I am now. You could call it ground zero. In a way though, we're all at ground zero. A point in our lives where one chapter ends with another one just about to start. Some of us are graduating and starting something completely new and foreign and daunting, but also absolutely thrilling. Others may be leaving Baobab for another reason, ready to take on new adventures elsewhere. For some, it may feel like just the end of another school year, with the next year only waiting to be slogged through. But think of the opportunities, the experiences, and the memories that this new year will bring. 
While most of us have a rough idea of what next year could look like, we can never know for certain that it will turn out the way we have planned. I mean, if COVID has told us one thing, it is that. But that's the most exciting part of it all. The mystery, the anticipation, the hope. That's what will carry all of us from ground zero into new and unexplored land. Although you've probably heard this cliche before, life is like a journey. What we have experienced in the past is what we take with us into the future. For me, a big part of that is the time that I've spent at Baobab. For you, it may be that too, or it could be something else. Whatever it is though, we are all parts of each other's journeys in some way or another. So thank you for being a part of mine. And now at this stage, I would like to hand over to Mrs. Noble, the principal, for her principal's address this morning. Now, for some of you whose favourite subject is English, you will know that a play on words using lots of words in a row that are starting with the same letter or sound is sometimes called alliteration. So I thought I would have an attempt at trying to find a sentence that summarised this year using alliteration and I've used words that begin with UN. This year has been unpredictable, unprecedented, unparalleled, unrelenting, unusual, unforgiving, unfamiliar and uncertain. But it has certainly not been underwhelming. Now, those of you who enjoy words might want to make up your own sentence that you think sums up 2020-2021. A very unusual year for all of us. Back in August 2020, we started the new academic year with great hope of returning for what we would consider to be a normal year at Baobab College. But very quickly, some of our expectations, hopes and dreams became a little unhinged, to say the least. We bounced out and in school over the course of this year, but we must still count our blessings and our good luck in 2021, as it continued to be a year of firsts for Baobab. Although it was our first examination session where everyone had to wear masks, our first year to play and work only in our year group bubbles, and our first year to not be able to compete in competitive sport, we also had many other positive first experiences. We had our first online open day, our first online option evenings, our first time to have homemade meals delivered to school for lunches, our first parent-teacher conferences online for some year groups, our first campsite and bush days on bare bab grounds, our first carol service online and our first Zambia week online and our very first year 10 careers week happened which was a huge success. The year has continued to ask us to innovate and change, making us more flexible and creative in our thinking. These are all positive traits and things that we adhere to at Baobab College and encourage. Although many events and activities didn't go ahead as planned, we must actually wholeheartedly commend everybody, teachers, pupils and parents alike on the way you all fully embraced all that was possible and optimised what we had to produce the best outcome for all in the circumstances that we faced together. We've been able to look back and realise how important our friends are to us. I'm sure if I asked any one of you, what did you miss most about school this year? What did you miss most when you weren't on campus? I'm pretty sure the answer would be, it was my friends. Connections are so very important to all of us and the constant awareness that your friends are always there for you, by your side, throughout the entire journey, makes all that hard work worth it. So something to take away today. I'd ask you to check up on your friends, might 
um, more often than you might think because it can actually be life-changing to someone. Use the holidays to check on a friend, keep in touch. Use things like FaceTime or phone calls or Google Meets when you can't meet with them in person. A friend reaching out just to say hi makes someone smile and it makes someone's day. Use the holidays as well to do something productive. I know a lot of you are looking forward to perhaps binge watching your favourite series on Netflix or tuning into the football on DSTV or the Olympics. That's all great and good things to do, but I'd encourage you as well over these long winter days to pick up a book, to start a project, to do some arts and crafts, learn a new skill, keep fit and even help around the house. Above all, keep busy and find something that you're interested in doing and help others and enjoy your time away from school now and enjoy time to recharge your batteries so you're ready for the next academic year. I wish you all a very happy and restful holiday. So this brings us to the end of today's proceedings and I would just like to extend a hearty congratulations to all of our recipients and all of our award winners this morning. And I'd like to wish you all a very pleasant break. Please stay safe and we look forward to seeing you back in school in August.